Skybird. This is Dropkick with a red dash alpha message in two parts. Break, break. Let's so take a couple of minutes to look at um, typical uh, green laser uh, diode pump solid state module. Now this is from what was called the lead light. Um, it was a common pointer, uh, I think, back in about 2002, um, 2003, around those those time those years. Um, there wasn't too many low cost pointers out there. In fact, uh, my first lead light, I think we purchased. Uh, it was an anniversary gift. Uh, I got it for our first anniversary, and it cost about three hundred and fifty dollars U.S. Uh, for a five milliwatt green laser so this is going way back long before the explosion with the Chinese uh, inexpensive uh, laser pointers now one thing I'd like to say about these these are the original is they both had an IR filter to filter out any residual uh, IR from either the pump or from the conversion in the the pump medium and uh, they also had feedback as you can see the little lines coming back off of here uh, this was to report back to the driver um, the light output and it would it, it'd keep itself adjusted. It's uh, You don't see it too often in, in the Chinese pointers, that's for sure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this one up, show its operation quickly, and then I'm going to break it down and just show you the pieces and then we're going to build it right back up. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit and right away you can see the green light coming. Now. This is at 130 milliamps, so that's probably, you know, a microwatt or so. Uh, if I roll it back just under the threshold, you can see, get rid of the green. You can't see any any other light. Let me shut this light off. Oh, it's not going to work because that unplugs my power supply. <laughs> Anyways, this this is this is uh, this module is IR filtered. It has a small uh, greenish filter that once the IR is passed through the little crystal set, it filters out any residual IR, and it does a really good job at it because normally with a cheap a cheap module, just going under threshold, you'd still see a pinkish glow. There is no pinkish glow here because the filter is trapping it, and it's not allowing it out which is hazardous so the, again this is this is a quality module um, no uh, no IR is passing so I'll ramp this up a little bit I'm gonna go up to just under 200 milliamp and that should be about a 5 milliwatt beam right there but there's no no collimating lens so as you can see it's got a very fast divergence to it now, the divergence on a DPSS comes by way of the little lens that sits on the top. Okay, that's enough. We don't have to show any more of the green light coming out of it. Now, if you look at the top, you see this little lens attached. There's a lens glued on there. And what we're going to do is remove that. Now, that that is an expander lens. And what its job is, is to take the raw output beam from the crystals and open it up so when I take this little lens off and you have a look underneath you're gonna see an exposed crystal now that exposed crystal that's the little crystal that makes it well, it's, a, it's an actual two crystals bonded together they make the green light combined it, it, it converts uh, the 808 to 1064 and then from 1064 to 532 nanometer which is the green light that you're desiring from this little module so once that beam comes out, it's a very fine beam. Nothing like a, a raw laser diode. A bare laser diode does the same thing. It's got a, a rapid diverging beam. And then you put another lens above that, which collimates it into a parallel beam, gives you that nice, you know, straight beam. This lens is put in here to expand and, and reorient the beam so it doesn't diverge as quickly. Now, when I remove this, which I'll do now, carefully because these lenses are good to have around you don't want to break them pop that off and as you 
is just epoxied everything with these are epoxied even the expensive ones everything is epoxy so that's your little lens there that's your expander so now we've taken that out you can see the IR filter and the IR filter is part of this little black casing here which I'm going to also remove so let's see what it looks like without the expander first so I'm going to turn that up to about 200 milliamp So now, you can see the expander no longer gives you that, that rapid diverging beam in a V-shape. Just tilt this light so I can show a bit better. Oh, okay, that's better. So what we're going to do next is pop off this piece here that's holding the IR filter and expose the crystals. I'm going to shut this off. Let me get some light back on here. Okay, so again, we're just going to gently nudge. If you look around the edges, you see the drops of glue that are holding this in place. So, one quick way is just to get a pair of side cutters and just give a little scrape. Break that glue loose. These two wires aren't needed. These were the uh, feedback that uh, you need a specific driver to support that. And it's not really needed. It's not necessary. It depends if you want a stable output or not. So, and you can see on the inside of there, there's the IR filter. It's a greenish, greenish colored piece of glass, and that uh, removes the 808 and the 1064 before the 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 blade, the beam leaves the the aperture. If you don't have this, and 90% of the low-cost China pointers you're buying on eBay they don't have this and if you get hit in the eye if you're lucky the beam is five milliwatt of green uh, most of them are usually over the five milliwatt mark which means instant damage you can't blink fast enough plus you have the the no IR no IR filter and you've got uh, God knows how many milliwatts of uh, 1064 and 808 also impacting your eye and you're not going to feel that you're not going to notice it and you're not going to feel it the only way to test for that is to, to filter out the 532, which is the green, and throw it on a power meter, and you'll know how much IR leakage there is. But uh, a simple little filter like this is a really good thing to have. So, <clears throat> now the, the top end is off. If you look closely, you can see that little, that little reflection in the middle. That's the, uh, that's the uh, face of the crystal. Uh, of the second crystal, which outputs the 532. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. And this time, now that the IR, IR filter is out of the way, you should see a pinkish light, which reminds me I need my glasses for this. Okay. So, you see that green, but if you look carefully, you can see a pinkish glow underneath it. Actually, it's a better illustrate turn down just below threshold so the green stops so now the green is gone almost there no more green but do you see that that's the IR that's 808 now if you have another lens sitting above that which would normally leak if it didn't have any type of uh, IR filter you get a nice little beam and even though it diverges quickly, it can be a very high number, depending on the intended output of the laser. Like I've said before, if it's a 200 milliwatt green laser, like a true 200 milliwatt, then the diode is pumping out about one watt, a thousand milliwatts, which is already into the class four. And that IR can be very damaging to your eyes. You won't even know it's coming. So again, IR filters are really important stuff. That that is not green light. That's that's the wasted IR. Now if I put this little cap that was in here in front of it, you notice how it filters it out nice. Okay. So always good to have IR filters. Let's shut this off. Okay. So now say you had a a pen 
and it just stopped working. When you turn it on, you can see the IR um, or a reddish glow, which you shouldn't be looking at. Never look in the aperture because uh, if that's there, there's laser light present. And if you don't have the proper goggles, then you're, you're toasting your eyes. Now, if you took it out of a pen and stopped working, there could be a few reasons why it doesn't work. And in most cases, when I read people posting that their green laser pointer stopped working, most of them will say, you know, there's a cherry red glow, which again is super, super dangerous because um, it's IR. You can't see it. If you put your camera on it, then you'll get an indication of how bright it is. Um, but in most cases, people who are new to lasers, they'll say, yeah, my green pointer stopped working. I have a red glow. That glow means your pump diode's still working. That means you still have IR coming out of your diode because at the factory they set it at a reasonable level. The diode shouldn't be burning out. Um, if you get, if you, if you modify your laser, um, if you find a laser that has a, a potential meter on the board and you turn it up and drive a little more current into the diode, um, then it could be your your diode that's gone. And finding a suitable replacement is not always easy. Like uh, I, I have a lot of 808 diodes, but they're all nine millimeter. This is a 5.6. So to replace this one would be easy because it's only a 5 milliwatt laser. Um, it's a, about a 250 milliwatt maximum uh, IR diode. So you could replace it with a, a 500 milliwatt and drive it up a bit and probably get 20, 30 milliwatts out of your, your uh, stock 5 milliwatt greenie. So again, assuming that your crystal is no longer sitting in the correct position, which is, you know, 90% of the cases, you can get your laser working again, but it's going to take a little bit. And most importantly, it takes safety glasses. If you don't have glasses, do not be doing this because you're going to be exposed to, to some bright IR. So I'm going to try to break this loose. This puppy's on here good. So you want something that's going to get a firm grip and then just give it a little bend. There, and she snaps right off. Now, this is this is not a common thing. If you look closely at this module, here you have your little crystal. I'll use the tweezers so my fingers aren't in the way. That's the back of your crystal. It's just a tiny little square in the middle of this brass heat sink. So a 200 milliamp of uh, current in. I'm seeing 125 milliwatts of uh, 808 light. So that sounds about right. If it was a bad diode, you'd probably be seeing, you know, 5 or 10 milliwatts if you're lucky. And uh, a 200 milliamp is really inefficient. So, you know, this, this is doing good enough. Because, again, this is only a 5 milliwatt laser. The diode's not rated for anything higher than 2, 250 milliamps at most. Even 250 is probably pushing it. I'd say, uh, I never checked the original driver, but I'd, I'd say around 200 milliamp, uh, plus or minus, uh, you know, 15 or 20. Anyways, so now you have your raw platform. I put my goggles on here. Now, if we just plunk this crystal on top of here, and we're going to go up to 100 and 180 milliamp. Look at that. That's that's lucky. That's a rare one to get it on the first shot like that. <laughs> I just plopped it on there. But you can see as I move it, you can go from seeing IR to some green actually coming out. Now this will be the same thing as if it died. If your green stopped working and you took yours apart, this is exactly what you'd go through. Now it's not always easy to find that, that sweet spot. What you got to do is Center it with your fingers so it's roughly in the center. And you keep moving around until you get some bright flashes. You're looking for a nice bright flash of green, which means you're, you're close to that sweet spot. So I keep rotating it. No. When you see a glow, that can be a bad sign too because you've got to watch you're not burning off the coating on the back. This, this is a real unorthodox method I'd imagine by... Uh, standards of, of you know professionals they, they use machines equipment does this kind of stuff um, 
this way here is about the most do-it-yourself method. I'm not sure how they do them in China, but I'm sure it's probably similar to this. I know some of their setups are pretty crude. Okay, so that seems to be the brightest I'm getting right now. So I can barely make it out. I'll turn it up just a little bit. Oh, let me see. I turned it up and it got dim on me. That is a perfect example. Some spots just don't like extra power. They like less. See, with, with green, well, with DPSS in general, one thing you'll find is, you know, you could put, say, 500 milliamp into the diode and get, you know, 100 milliwatts of green. And then you turn it up a little bit more, and all of a sudden your green starts to drop. It'll go from 100 milliwatt, and it'll start backing off. This, in most cases, is because the more current you give to the pump diode, you change its wavelength slightly. And you need it to be as close to 808 as possible. Um, the hotter it gets, the more power you put into it, the wavelength can climb 808, uh, from 808 to 809, 810. Who's to say? But it will and it can wander. So that conversion becomes even more inefficient. So now you're going from 100 milliwatts of green and you're putting a little more power, or you see it, it, it can also work in reverse. You, you might go from uh, 500 milliamps into the diode and back it off to 480, and all of a sudden your output of green drops to, uh, jumps to 120. You get increases in your power because you're getting closer to the wavelength, the process is more efficient, and it makes better use of the light that it's absorbing, etc., etc. So it, it's a tricky little thing to do. It, it, you, you have to go between, you, first of all, you have to have an adjustable power supply. And you're going to go in between getting the brightest you can. If you have a power meter, the most you can get on your power meter. IR filtered, of course, because that will skew your readings. And adjust and adjust. And then you adjust your power and you see if I drop it a little bit, does it go up? If I increase it, does it go down? You, your goal is to get the most light you can out of it. And again, this was only a 5 milliwatt at 200 milliamp. So when I'm finished this, I can reference back and, and see what kind of increase I made. See, this also works not only for repairing a laser. You can take a perfectly good working laser and do the exact same breakdown and try for better results. You know, for 10, 15 bucks, you can pick up a, a green laser on eBay and you can just mess with it. And this is exactly how I learned how to do what I do. It was by, you know, stripping everything down that I could get my hands on and going from the cheapest lasers made to some of the most expensive by way of you know a hobbyist I, I buy broken lasers you can go through it and you can see what they do and how they do and i find it's a really really good way of learning you know the processes of what works and and what's tried and tested so it turns down because it's getting a bit warm now so now you get the idea that that's all it takes really to get a green laser working again you just have to find that little sweet spot, play around with it. You may never get the original output. You might have had a laser that had, you know, 20 milliwatts uh, of green, and it started to fail, and you took it apart, and you followed this, these steps. You might only get 10 milliwatts out of it at most, but that could be because the best part of the crystal that allowed the 20 milliwatts was damaged. It may be a burn, maybe a piece of dust was there. Any number of things could have happened, and you got to settle with a 10 milliwatt. But in some cases, you can take a you know uh, a laser that was rushed and bend at a lower milliwatt and take it apart, you know, redo all the steps, get it back together, and you might have a, a laser with twice the output. That that's also very possible because there's no quality control. They slap them together, they test them, and that's it. There's no going back and adjusting. They just get them out the door. So it works to your advantage. But it also depends uh, what type of laser it is to begin with. Uh, a lot of the Chinese companies uh, that make them, uh, they don't make something that's good for 5 milliwatts and that's it. Um, typically, their uh, diodes, their pump diodes, run at 3, 350 milliwatt. Um, in, in most cases, uh, for a good one, you're looking at 20 to 30 milliwatts of green uh, light output. But again, you can you know play around with it and see if you can increase it. Uh, you can always tell what your intended output is should be um, simply by testing how much current the laser draws. So you take your pointer, you pop off the end cap, you point the laser in a straight direction, 
you you know hold the switch down you can lock it down with a piece of tape or a twist tie and then you use your two probes for your multimeter and you measure how much current is passing through your meter so one probe on the tip of the battery and the other probe on the body the circuit will complete and the meter will tell you how many milliwatts that your laser is drawing if your laser draws you know 400 milliamp 500 milliamp then you should have you know 80 to 100 milliwatt green pointer